and then to allow existing projects via build settings to determine whether they want to build in container or not. Um, by doing this, this requires no new project types added to the CDT, um, so you don't have auto tools with container, uh, standard make with container, all the regular projects uh, exist as they do. And then by having it through build settings, we can tie this to the configuration, the build configuration. So that's allowing one to um, take your application, your C project and build it for multiple different containers or different environments. So you may want to build for Ubuntu or you might want to build for Fedora and you can also build locally. So it gives you, it gives you that flexibility to have a separate build configuration for each. Um, some of you might be familiar with the PTP project where they support remote uh, build and uh, other things. Uh, now what they do is they support indexing on the remote host or the remote uh, platform. Um, I didn't want to do that. I just want to support indexing on the local host and that will sort of define uh, why I did what I did. Um, I also have less problems than the PTP because the remote host, you really don't know any information about, whereas when you're dealing with a Docker image, you, you know everything there is to know. Um, we're going to start with the current managed build. Um, eventually, we're going to have to uh, work this technology into the core model or the core build model that Doug is working on. But uh, for now, it's just managed build. So the design is relatively simple. Uh, is uh, First of all, we override the command launching and we run our commands via the Linux tools Docker tooling uh, plugin. Um, so every command essentially runs a Docker container. Uh, so to support being able to access your project, uh, we mount the project and working directories into the container, as well as any related projects. Uh, if you have related projects, they have to be compatible or at least have the same build uh, parameters so that they can rebuild in the container as well. Now, uh, mounting projects and working directories, uh, we do that preferably through a bind mount. Um, so this is very, very, very uh, quick and, and, and doesn't require um, a lot of resources. In the case of a remote daemon, so if you're, if you're trying to point to a remote Docker daemon, uh, you can't do a bind mount. And what happens is the Docker tooling knows you want to uh, mount something in. And we end up doing a copy. And then uh, when the container is finished, we copy back any changes. So this is something to, to note that if you can avoid a remote daemon, uh, then you'll avoid that little hassle. So when the, uh, the build occurs, uh, the CDT will parse the output to figure out include paths that are required. And this is, this is fed into the indexer. So what we do is we copy the header files from the uh, image into your workspace. Uh, this is essentially a one-time cost because the, doc the headers in the Docker image don't change. Um, it's also done intelligently so that if you've, if you've already copied over user include, there's no point looking if you have user include uh, gconf or something like that. So uh, it will go through, the, through the, uh, the check of whether the headers are cached. And then what happens is that when the indexer runs, we take the include paths that were calculated from the build and we will modify them to point to the cached headers that are in your workspace. So the indexer just does what it does and it, and it just works. So this is the uh, container settings tab. This is added uh, from the Docker uh, launch feature in CDT. Um, as you'll note, that it's, it's uh, in the C and C++ build settings, and therefore it, uh, it's under the uh, manage configurations. Uh, so you can see that in this case, I've got the debug configuration active. The, the first thing is whether you want to build inside a Docker image. For any project that, that uh, installs the Docker feature, um, this will be off by default. Um, so then once you've chosen it, you have to select a, an open Docker connection. Um, I'll show out later just how to do that with the Docker tooling, but it needs to be an open Docker connection. And from there, uh, you, you pick uh, an image. Now, your choice of an image has to have all of the tools installed that are needed for the build. Uh, for most, it'll, it'll be a, a small subset, but you may have to install extra tools and form your own images that you can use for building. 
Um, and I'll also explain how to modify an existing image and add your tools that you need. Uh, at the bottom there, there's also data volumes. So it's possible that your build may require some additional directories that are not in your C project uh, or in related projects. So uh, an example is you might have a, an XML file that you use during the build. Um, you can bring that down so that the, uh, the build will work as, as it should. So basically recapping, you enable the container build, um, you choose your Docker connection, um, the Docker image must have the needed tools installed, and uh, then you can specify additional directories. So uh, regarding the cached headers that are in your workspace, uh, you might be adding, asking, well, you know, do I have to keep these forever? And the answer is no. Uh, under the preferences for uh, C and C++ Docker container, you have a list of all of the cached headers that you have. Um, they're basically, in terms of connection and image, it doesn't tell you exactly what headers you've uploaded, but you can at any time remove these. Um, it's, it won't, you can still build those projects that use these images. The, the, uh, the consequence is just that you will end up copying those header files again the next time you do the build. So if you want to set up your Docker image with the tools that you need, there's, there's two ways you can do this, and some of you might know this, is that you can either use a Docker file build or a container commit. Um, the Docker file build, a Docker file is a special file uh, where you can specify a base image and then um, a set of commands uh, for building your new image from that base image. Um, I'll, I'll show one later. Um, the container commit is a little easier or more freestyle. To use container commit, you take a base image that you want to base yourself on and then just run a shell command uh, in the Docker tooling. And then from there on the command line, you can start installing packages yourself. So here's an example where you, you install GCC, G, uh, C++, bin utils, make, and the GDB, GDB server. Um, the GDB server is needed if you want to do debugging. Um, and then once you're finished or happy with your uh, result, you can use the Docker tooling to commit the container as an image. And with this, you can then you can use that new image. Uh, one of the benefits is that you can mount your project in there if you want. Uh, when you do this, start your, um, create your shell on the base image. And then what you can do is you can try building it. And when you get it working, when you commit the container, all of your mounted volumes are not part of that image. So it's a way for you to experiment, say, oh, I forgot this tool, I forgot that tool. Um, to each its own, whichever you, whichever you prefer. So as far as debugging support goes, uh, it's currently using GDB server and using the, uh, treating it as a GDB remote session in, in the CDT. Uh, I found that older versions post GDB may not work. Example, GDB 6.x, uh, I have problems with that. But I, I've got it working with GDB 7.6.1, and that's 2013, so it's not even, it's not even a modern GDB. Um, if you're going to run this on a non-Linux system, uh, then you're going to need GDB to support the Linux ABI, because your executables will be the Linux ABI. So for example, for Windows, you can configure GDB as such, and then here uh, I, I suggest using uh, MinGW on Windows. Um, this here was a configure that was run on a Linux system to build for it for a, a MinGW host and enable the uh, Linux target. You can specify multiple targets in your GDB, GDB so you can create a single GDB that handles uh, MinGW local executables as well as the Linux. And I have a, a sample of that which I, I'll try and uh, provide it somehow through a wiki page or whatever in case people are having problems and, and, and how that was built. So the current status is that the initial managed build support was checked into master branch as a Sunday. Um, in just doing this demo, I found some problems that I've made fixes to. Um, so it will be part of the Oxygen.2 release of CDT. Um, again, fixes will occur as, as we find uh, problems. Right now, the Yocto team is very interested in helping out to support the new uh, build model from Doug. And um, so, Eventually, hopefully, this will work for the, for the new core build model. Um, as far as Docker tooling goes, uh, we have a, a, a nightly upside, uh, website for, or repository for Oxygen uh, that you can look for fixes. So when I 
before I get back, I want to get back. The, the problems that I found in Docker tooling will be up there. We also have our uh, our updates Docker nightly, which is for the um, probably I don't know if it's a photon release yet. It's for the next release. So anyway, um, that's that's where you can look for these. So right now, I'm going to uh, demo the the support here. So I'm going to start off with the, the Docker tooling uh, perspective. Some of you may or may not have seen it before. And then uh, over here is in the Docker Explorer is where you set up your connections. Uh, if you're running on Linux, it will find a, uh, a Unix socket if you have one open. Um, in Windows and Mac, it tries to find things it may or may not, I guess, uh, but if you need to, you can add a connection. And uh, here's where you can specify uh, a TCP connection. And if you need to enable authentication, we have support for that as well, in case you have like a private repo or uh, example that you want to connect to the, to the Docker uh, main repository, but want to push things up there. So we're going to go to the C perspective here. So here I have a, a, a Hello World uh, Manage Make project. And uh, let's look at the source here. So I'm going to uh, just modify it slightly. And I'm going to initiate a build just so you can see what's happening here. console here that's why yeah so you'll notice that uh, there's a little header there that says running an image Fedora 26 with tools latest and, it, and it's building in the container uh, the executable by virtue of the fact that I did a bind mount the executable is, is copied back into the project if we go and look at the uh, project properties We can see that here for the container settings that uh, we've chosen to build inside the image, uh, the local host uh, is that's our one connection that we have, and we selected an image that we know has the tools that we need to do the build. I, and there was there was no uh, uh, containers required or volumes required. Um, so now that we've uh, we've built it, um, let's go look at sort of sort of the options that when you when you run it under the preferences. Um, by default, uh, this will delete the containers after launch. If you want to keep them, uh, you can click on this. Uh, the reason for keeping a container after launch would be that, let's say you run into a problem, you can commit that container as an image, bind your, your project again, go in there with a the shell and fool around and just figure out what actually went wrong if it's not obvious from the, from the output messages. Um, in addition, uh, this is where the cache headers are. The final sort of option is that uh, under Docker here, um, logging. So because we're writing to the console, there is the ability to get a timestamp for all the output messages that occur in the console. Um, you may or may not want that. You may want it just to figure out sort of a relative timing of some operations that where printfs occur. The, the other thing to note is that uh, if you decide to keep the, uh, the containers, there are special labels that are set up for the, for the CDT containers and, and it contains their project. So what that means is that through the Docker tooling, you can actually run a filter, find them all, and then select them all and delete them. So if you want to keep containers around and then later clean up, it's, it's relatively easy to do. So now we have our binary and we're going to run it. So we select, uh, run as a C++ container application. That will grab the image information from the build. So it, it's going to use the same. Now, so here it is run in Fedora 26 with tools latest. You saw something flash by and what that was was that um, because 
I have project build automatically, what happens is that the CDT tries to build a project before running it or doing a debug. If that's annoying to you, the make we've already made, so the, the make all just does nothing. Uh, it's relatively quick, but it's good for catching it in case you've made some changes that you're not realizing that you've done. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but you can turn it off if that's, that's annoying to you. Um, this particular run that we just did ends up creating a, a run configuration, a launch configuration. So um, all the regular things apply to the, oops, to the, where am I? All of the things apply uh, as a regular CDT run configuration. You just have an extra tab here. There are some additional options that are not provided when you use the shortcut. Uh, for example, you can do the keep container after launch here instead of having to make it a preference for everything. Um, you can support standard in in case your application needs to take input. Um, and you can run in privilege mode. I'll probably be adding some, uh, another one to replace the privilege mode um, if I haven't done already. This is, this is an older branch um, than the master. Um, and that's using sec, sec comp unconfined. Uh, that's required to run the GDB server because the GDB server accesses some things that the the the, uh, the daemon prohibits. Um, in addition, there's some other features I can add. So we'll we'll be adding additional options as needed. But anyway, if you need to use those options ahead of time, then you can simply create a run configuration yourself. It also allows you, if you wanted to. Instead of running in the image that it was built in, you could try another image to see if the executable is compatible. Uh, and again, if you need to add program arguments, this is the way, this is the way you do it. Uh, as in the CDT, the run, the run launch configuration has a, uh, a brother debug configuration that's created for you. So you don't, you don't have to do that. So, and now I'm gonna run the debug here. Again, debug as C and C++ container application. I don't know if you can see in the console here. So the console is starting up GDB server in the container, and then we automatically tie in the, uh, the GDB as a remote GDB session. So you've got all the source, so just it, it's uh, it's very nice. So here we can see I have a variable. We can step over. That's the variable. Like nothing new here. And I've got to a small screen here for you to see what's going on in the console. So we can shut up a bit there. So uh, if we run that to completion, we can see that we get the exit code as well as the fact that we were running GDB server in the image. So I'm going to go back to the uh, C perspective here and show you. So um, as part of the indexing, uh, there's two aspects. One are the include pass found when you do the build, but there's also the uh, dynamic GCC uh, specs detection for like the default header files from C and that kind of thing. So if we go here and we, uh, we see that excess success, uh, if we go to its definition, we see that we're in standard lib.h. But if we hover over standard lib.h, you can see that that's actually a, the standard lib.h in my cached headers. And you can see that it's the, the, the nomenclature is basically the, the Unix var socket, Fedora 26 with tools latest. So I can see that that's actually doing what I want. If I then double click on any other header file included by that, uh, again, we're pointing into the headers that are inside the cached. Um, and you can see that the indexer has grayed out various sections, so the indexer works with this, that's the best way to put it. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna create a, an auto tools project just to show you that it really isn't doing anything. Auto tools are a little trickier is that in that we want to run auto tools on the host, not into the container. So the commands that we support in the CD2, we want to run those locally. 
the reason for this is we don't want to run an auto make on a file in the container, which could have a completely different version of auto make and auto comp. It'll just, it'll, it'll fail with bizarre things, uh, depending on whether it's uh, forward or backwards. So let's go look at our source file here. And just to show you that uh, if I F3 on this, this is actually the local user includes standard lib.h. So I'm going to uh, uh, change the properties. I'm going to say build in. Latest, and we're going to do an apply and close. Now, if you notice on the bottom here, you see the discovery is occurring, and that's uh, running G, either, either GCC or G++ or both, and you see that it's copying, it's, it's copying um, uh, volumes from the container. Um, it's been relatively quick so far, but I, again, I haven't tried it on anything really, really ridiculously large scale. Um, but a lot of people keep their images basically just what they need. So there isn't a lot of fluff where you've installed a lot of packages that, that uh, completely. Uh... So now if we go back to helloauto.c here, and again, we have the correct macro expansion, but this time it's pointing to the, uh, the cache header file. And again, we could have multiple caches um, see what else do I want to show you here. Um, for the auto tools, I haven't quite um, got it working automatically. So for now, uh, it's advised that you just reconfigure your project so that uh, <coughs> now let's do that first. And now uh, I'm going to do a build. Find a build somewhere. So we're doing the build. And again, we're running in there. Uh, if we actually look for the configure for Hello Auto, you can see that we actually ran the configure inside the container here at the top here. Um, that's necessary because all the values really have to come from the container and not from the host. So it's kind of split in that you want some tools in the, in the auto tools world to run on the host and some in the uh, in the container itself. Um, trying to think of anything else. So here's an example of the Docker file I was talking to you earlier. And so the Docker file is using Fedora 26 as its base. In this case, I got a stupid environment variable that I set up. And um, I have a run command here to do the install of the various packages that I need. And then you can, in, in this uh, image, you can have a default command that runs if, if, if a command is not specified. So in this case, I'm just echoing dollar fish, which is... If we go back to the... Um, to the Eclipse session here, I can show you in the Docker thing how easy it is to uh, build an image yourself. So here's a case of Docker Fedora 26. I'm going to run an image based off, or a container based off that image. Uh, and it's already set up for me because the last time I did this, uh, bin sh, I'm um, keeping standard in so I can type in. This uh, i and t thing will end up getting a terminal rather than a console. So let's hit finish. And so now I've got a terminal. And uh, keep doing this. So I have uh, in here, for example, I could say uh, which GCC, it's going to say which is not found. So I can just run regular commands. And again, it's based on the system here. So this is Fedora 26, so it should go to Fedora 26. It'll take too long for us to wait for the whole thing, but I'll, I'll just show you. Should be my there we go. So it's loading from the Fedora 26 repository, just like you regularly would do. And now I can keep doing this and building it up. 
and then uh, if I had linked in the C thing, I could keep trying until I get the build right. Until, but basically, I want a minimal, I want a minimal set of packages that are needed to do my build and my debug. Uh, and possibly, if your run requires additional things, then, then you can do that all in one, or you can, you can create separate images for running if you want to keep things kind of light. Um, I think that's it. Uh, let me see. Um, if anybody wants some further information just about what is Docker, I'm sure everybody here probably knows that. Uh, I wrote a newsletter in April of this year, but that was just covering what was done for the run and debug. But there's good information there about the labels I discussed about how to uh, keep containers and then later on uh, destroy them uh, all at once from the Docker tooling. Um, the Linux distros list if you have any questions about the actual Docker tooling plugins or issues that are, are tracked to be uh, as, as part of the Docker tooling rather than the CDT. And there's a CDT mailing list if you want to look to see at the uh, existing work to try and um, get this kind of technology into the new core build model. Uh, there's a bug open for it. There was a bug open for the initial, uh, the initial con contribution. Uh, I will be, as I said, before I get home or when I get home, I'll be checking in some changes, the, uh, some bugs that I found in both Linux tools and the CET to get this demo the way you see it now. Um, and please evaluate the sessions and sign in and vote at EclipseCon. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. I will show you, uh, actually, I, did, I, did, I didn't show one view that I, yeah, it's showing them as being in the, uh, the cache directory, the home Johnson, that's, that's my cache directory in the workspace. If I go to um, the same thing occurs in the, um, if I go in the project properties and go look at the pass and symbols, pass and symbols, I got the wrong one, preprocessor, I always get mixed up by this. There we go. You'll see that for the CDT GCC built in compiler settings, this is what it actually found when it ran. Uh, there's a problem with sashes here, so I made it ridiculously long to handle the case of the, the name of the uh, the names of the include paths. But in addition to that, is all the macros that it found. So these are all the macros that you would have gotten back, which are um, useful for your code just to see what they got back. And if uh, you pour through here, I think somewhere you can see that it's. Uh, I could find that information that's unique. If I can't, oh well. Anyway, that's uh, that's how that works. And when you switch, uh, it's probably not working properly. But if you were to switch uh, active configurations, that should switch these back to whichever they're supposed to be. So again, I'll be making sure that that works. I've gotten to work on Windows. I have not tested on Mac. But my assumption is it should be it should work if you have the the, the GDB and GDB server built for that. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.